Good morning. I'm Sister Nella Sammons from Tornado Apostolic Church. Coming to you this morning with a devotion entitled Growing in Faith. I want to read from Luke 22, verses 38, 39. Back up. 28, 29, and 30. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. And I appoint unto you a kingdom, as my Father hath appointed unto me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. As we grow in Jesus Christ, there exists within us a faith that grows. It is beyond just believing. It is a way of life. Sometimes it seems we grow weary. We can become faithless, and it is in these moments that we must know the Lord loves us and is preparing us to do His will. Have you ever heard someone say that before, that the Lord's preparing you? Or had someone asked you that? I believe it's something someone says when they are responding to, How you doing? One might reply, I'm keeping the faith. I began thinking about the expression itself and the word faith, and I want to share with you what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church concerning faith this morning. The Anger's Dictionary describes faith as a belief or trust in a higher power. Faith also is used in Scripture And it defines for us a moral quality held in relationship with God, whereby men have confidence in God. In a theological sense, faith has two elements. One is the intellectual meaning that the basic truths and the facts concerning God has been revealed to you by Him and established in your intellect. And by faith you believe them. As a result of this faith, salvation is birthed. And many. The second element is the testimonial faith. It's the faith that lies within the text of Hebrews that declares it. It is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Sometimes we have a hard time with this element. Sometimes we all struggle with the testimonial faith. Any witness? But saints of God, this is the element you must grasp in your life this morning. If you desire to have the hopes in your life appear, that you turn them into intellectual evidences and facts in your life, write these two down because we will be getting back to them. I want to read from Romans chapter 12, verses 3 through 6. For I say... Through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Know this book, the book of Romans, was written to believers. To Roman believers, for the most part, Paul was instructing and asking their help to spread the gospel. He points out that in verse 3, to every believer... To every man receives a measure of faith. Um, Compare it to $10 to $10,000. Verse 6, to operate in the gifts of the Spirit, you must gain, again, have an understanding where your faith stands. What level are you operating at? Do you know what your gifts are? Do you know how and when to move in your gifts? 
Do you know how much to believe God for? Do you know your measure of faith concerning your prayer life? All these areas of your life require a testimonial kind of faith. Praise his name, somebody. I understand that every man is given a measure of faith. In 2 Thessalonians 3, 1 through 2, 1 through 2, we see Paul again writing this time to the Thessalonica church, and he points out in verse 2 that not all men believe, both intellectually and testimonially, both inside and outside the church, not all men believe in the intellectual element of faith. They do not believe in a higher power. They do not believe in any God. The measure of translation of this text says that I'm finding that not all believers are believers. Again, in Romans, it is pointing out that not all of those who are saved in the church are operating in a testimonial kind of faith. But understand this. They too serve a purpose. See, because it takes the unreasonable behavior of others sometimes to create a test in your life that forces you to go to your word and to seek his face in prayer, which brings about a victory, which results in increased faith of the testimonial kind. But the faith of the testimonial kind is, for faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You need the testimonial kind. Say, I need those tests. These are the tests that drive you to your knees. Those tests let you know how much faith you really possess. They let yourself know who you really are. They show how much you really can place your faith in God before the living God and believe Him. How much faith do we possess in Him for daily deliverance and daily victory? Verse 3 says that the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. And reasonable behavior of others create tests in your life to establish your level of testimonial faith. So in Luke twenty-two twenty-eight, there are those of you who have withstood some tests. Jesus is saying, you are those who have stood by me. You have been through thick and thin. You have seen all the miracles and you have seen all the terrible moments Jesus says, if you were with me, I am with you always. That's all I have for today. I will go into part two of growing in faith next time. God bless you and your family. In Jesus' name, amen.